Google Calendar is a must-have tool behind your belt if you are a tech professional or a person who simply uses online or goes for offline events. Regardless of the type, you will still need to know the time, location, and also a link to join if it's an online one. Anyways, today I'm going to show you how to use Google Calendar so you would never miss a meeting and use your schedule like a professional. But let me remind you who this guy is. My name is Sergey Kromchenko. I'm a software QA engineer, lead manager, and a senior engineering manager of SDAT in the past. But these days, I'm helping people like you to become a software QA engineer from scratch or to improve your skills or to learn tools like Google Calendar. All right, hit this big fat thumb up button below and let's get started. Whenever you're using Google or Gmail or any kind of Google Apps, you can simply click on Google Apps on the right top corner of the screen and select Calendar. That's where you can find it. Great. Now you will see your weekly calendar and that's what's set by default. And you can switch between daily right here. You can see an entire day. If you're very busy, you probably will enjoy that. If you are relatively busy, just like myself, you will use weekly calendar so you could see what's about to happen every single week. And if you don't have any meetings at all, you can just rarely see some on your calendar, you can use monthly view to know how your month is going to look like. But I'm going to switch to week. Great. So imagine you are going for some event and you have paid and registered and they have sent you an invitation. Let me mimic that. Let me do the same thing. I'm going to go to my other account where I kind of busy guy and I will schedule something 10 a.m. by California on Sunday 20th. By the way, I have a multiple time zones. You likely have only one. I'll show you how to add another one later on so you could easily see if you're working with the people from overseas. Great, 10 a.m. I'm going to click here and say, let's say it's a public speaking class with Sergi. And I'm going to use, let's use Google Meet. That will be easy for you guys to recognize. I'm going to, you could possibly add location, description, etc. If you want to create an appointment uh, or an event. And I'm going to just save it the way it is. Now you have it on your calendar only, but you have to invite people, right? So I'm going to click edit. I will paste it here. I will paste sergisdm at gmail.com. And now we see two guests, undisclosed recipient, which is myself. Actually, that's, that's the one that I've invited. And here's an organizer, Sergi, support at comify.com. Great. So now I'm going to hit save. You'll ask me, would you like to send invitation emails to Google Calendar guests? Absolutely. I do want you guys to get an invite from me so we could see it. Guests from outside of the org. Is it okay? Absolutely. We're going to invite all of the guests. Saving, event save, meaning an email was sent. So now you, as an invitee, should get an email. And I actually just got it. I saw that. I'm going to refresh the page, switch to 20th. Nothing here because we didn't accept it yet. Great. Let me go to my email. And we can see it right here. Sergey Kromchenko, invitation from unknown sender, public speaking class. So whenever you register for an event, you'll get something like this. Let's click it. You see that, oh, maybe that's a spam or not. You can add to calendar or, or just say report a spam. But I do know it's not a spam. I will say add to calendar. And now you can say either yes or no. I didn't hit it yet, but we can see event added to your calendar. So let's take a look. Let's click here, refresh the page, and you can see it right here, 10 a.m. From now on, after you have hit not a spam add, add to calendar, whenever this email sends you an invitation, you will automatically see it on your Google Calendar. And in your email, you can select if you will attend, maybe or no. In the same way, you can go here and that's where I would recommend you guys to stick for a majority of time. You can click on any of your events because you might have a lot if you will get busy. Click here and select yes, I will visit, which means that now it's blue and you have specified to the other person that you will be joining that webinar. And the other person is going to see it this way. Let me open it up. I click here. And undisclosed recipient, sergi.gmail.com, 
is attending. You can see the green check mark, which means I'm going to be attending it. So let's switch back. Great. You have told everyone that you're going to attend it. Now you can add a lot of these meetings on your schedule. What I'm going to show you guys is number one, on the top, you will see holidays that are happening throughout the days that you have. And one of the things that I would like you guys to know at the beginning, as the very base, is how to add multiple time zones. Because you guys might be living on the East Coast and I might be living on the West Coast. And whenever I send you a, an invite, you will see it in your time. Everything is yours. If you don't want to get confused, you don't have to add anything else. But if you want to add another calendar, I don't know, maybe European calendar or Californian calendar, you can do it in the following way. Let's go to settings. Let's scroll down. There we go. Display secondary time zone. I'm going to click that. And now we can choose the first one is going to be Pacific time by Los Angeles. And a second one, let's say it's going to be, let's have some, some fun. Let's scroll all the way. And let's say it's going to be Australian Western Standard Time, Perth. Excellent. And you can add label right here, AU Perth, just like that. Oh, I can, there is a limited amount of characters and this one we can call Kelly. So you could see them in the more familiar way to you. Great, it was automatically saved. I'm going to click back and now you will see multiple time zones. 10 a.m. meaning 1 a.m. in Australia and Perth. So this is how you can work with the multiple time zones and easily see their time and your time as well. This should be enough for beginning. Let me know if you guys would like to learn more about a Google Calendar or any similar tools. And just in case you forgot, you gotta hit that big fat thumb up button below, subscribe to our channel if you do not wanna miss out on such as useful content as this video and a lot of different types of videos that we have on this channel.